We can use the water balance principle to learn about the hydrology of an area. Here are a few examples. You should uh, try these examples first on your own. There's a worksheet that you can download. So work through them and I'll show you the results now. So pause it and uh, pause the video and, and go and try working these out on your own. When you get the result, here's the way that I did it. So the problem is that the average rainfall in a watershed is so, and the average ET is so, and you have no groundwater crossing the boundary, and you want to calculate the stream runoff. Okay, so here's the approach. We've got the watershed here. We'll look at it in cross-section. And we've got uh, um, precipitation. And we've got ET. And we've got stream runoff. And there's no groundwater crossing the boundary. So that's the sketch of the problem. And the control volume would be like this. And then I take the fluxes that are crossing the boundary and I write it as in equals out. I'm not given any information about storage here, so I just assume that the change of storage is negligible. Okay, so that's the balance that I get from the sketch, and I get the sketch from the problem. And I'm asked for the runoff, so I can just solve for that. And then I can just treat this as an equation. And if I have the terms in the same units, and in particular if they're averaged over the same area, then I can just solve for it. So I'm given the precipitation of 50 inches per year. And I'm going to subtract 32 inches per year. So it looks like the runoff is 18 inches per year. And then I'm asked, well, what fraction of the rainfall is ET? Well, ET is 32, the precipitation is 50, so the fraction um, ET over P would be 32 over 50, so that's 0.64. So the ET is 64% of the rainfall, and that's a typical value. Okay, so let's move on. Problem number two, assume the area of the watershed is uh, 50 square miles. What is the average stream discharge in cubic feet per second? So here's the way to do that. We're after a volumetric flow and we're given a flux, so given a flux and an area. So we just need to multiply those two together and convert. So let's see, the, f the stream discharge, we're given the, well, we calculated the stream runoff flux in feet per year. Actually, let's go back here. The problem asked for feet per year I gave it here in inches per year, so we can convert that 18 inches per year times 12 inches in a foot is 1.5 feet per year. Okay, so there's the result. Now we've got to determine what the flow rate is. So we'll do that. We've got a flux of 1.5 feet per year. Over 50 square miles. And we want to convert this to cubic feet per second. 
Okay, so let's see. First of all, let's get all of the air, all of the lengths into feet. So a mile squared is 5280 squared feet squared. And all of the time into seconds. So one year is 365 days. And one day is 86400 seconds. So let's check the units now. Day and day, year, year, square mile, square mile, feet squared, feet. So it looks like this units will be in cubic feet per second. We just have to go and do the calculation. So the result that you get here is 66 cubic feet per second. Okay, so let's take a look at this problem. In a closed watershed, we don't have any groundwater crossing the watershed boundary, and we're given the following things. So let's go and do a sketch. Here's our watershed in cross-section. So we have some rainfall, and we've got recharge given. We've got overland flow, and we've got ET, and subsurface storm flow. And what we're asked for is the base flow. Okay, so that's the problem. That's what we're given. And now what we need to do to solve this is to draw the control volume and construct then an equation from the balance. OK, so the important thing to recognize here is that the control volume that we draw has to have the flux that we're interested in calculating crossing it. So let's see. We can draw a control volume that looks like this. I'm going to draw a control volume on the aquifer. And if I do that, then I have the balance that the recharge is going in, and the base flow is going out. And that's, that's a legitimate balance on an aquifer. If there's no change in storage, and if there's no change or there's no um, repair and evapotranspiration, so we're given recharge, we can just calculate the base flow. That's, this is an easy one. The recharge is 13, and so base flow is 13 inches per year. And we can determine the fractional amount by taking 13 over 50. So that's 0.26. OK, so let's try another one. We also have a watershed where we're not having groundwater crossing the boundary, and we have similar kinds of things. So let's draw a sketch. Rainfall, recharge, overland flow, subsurface storm flow, and we want to get ET. Now, one of the things that we saw in the previous example is that just because we're given some information doesn't mean we need to use it. We need to use the we need to use the values that cross the boundary or that represent storage within the control volume, but we won't use anything else. So, we're after ET and we need to draw a control volume. So let's see. I'm going to try a control volume that goes up here and, and is over the um, Vado zone, like that. So in that case, I have precipitation in is equal to the ET out plus overland flow plus subsurface storm flow going out plus recharge going out. I'm after ET, and I know everything else. so. I'll look
looks like I'm in pretty good shape. ET then is P minus O minus the storm flow minus the recharge. So that'll be 60 inches per year minus one inch per year minus seven inch per year and the recharge is 10 minus 10 inch per year so 60 minus 10 minus 7 minus 1 that looks like the result is 42 inches per year for the ET So here's a, another problem. We have a flat field underlain by permeable soil, and during one month, we've got a certain amount of infiltration, an ET, and a recharge, and we want to calculate the average change in the water content. Okay, so let's see. Here's the field. This is the ground surface. This is the water table. So the control volume would be like this and we've got precipitate or infiltration coming in recharge going out we would have ET going out and then we've got some storage here three meters thick so here's the problem so the balance is going to be infiltration going in and ET is going out and recharge is going out and we change the volume stored over this area per well actually we don't have it per unit time because we're given this happens over a month but this is these are volumes so that volume per that's a volume per area and that's what all of these are so we can just write this like so. Okay, and recall from our previous um, notes that the change in the volume stored in the Veda zone per unit area, that's the change in the water content times the thickness of the Veda zone, change in the average water content. So we can substitute that in. And what we're after is the change in the water content. So, one over the thickness. So it looks like that will give us the result. So this is one over three meters. And the amount of infiltration is 0 0.1 meter. ET is 0 0.03 meter and recharge is 0 .0, 0 0.01 meter. Okay, so let me bring that over here. 0 0.1 minus 0 0.03 minus 0 0.01, that's going to equal 1 over 3 meters times. 0 0.06 meters. That's what I get from these parentheses. And that equals 0 0.02. So that's the fractional change in the water content that we get as a result of this balance.